What's up, everybody? Good evening. Hope you guys are doing well. And like I said um, a little earlier, I want to do a more robust post-game video about this Ducks-Huskies game. The, the earlier video was short. It was emotional. It was, you know, there were a lot of things going on there. And like I said in that video, it was kind of easy to forget about the game. Because the focus was all on those last, I'd say, six, seven minutes. What went down in those last six or seven minutes just overrode everything else in this game. And don't get me wrong. Any close game is going to be like that. Any close game is going to have things that happen in the last few minutes that outweigh dramatically the things that happened earlier in the game. That's just how it works. But I don't want to completely lose track of everything that happened to get us to that point. So... I tried my best in the earlier video to talk about the game as a whole, but I want to settle myself down like I am now. It's obviously been a few hours. I went out and did a couple of errands. I handled a couple of things. I ate dinner. And I just want to talk a little bit more about this game because this game deserves it. This is probably this is probably the best Huskies win since I almost want to say... I almost want to say 2009 beating USC with Jake Locker when they had uh, Matt Barkley. But that game, winning that game was not in service of that much. It was just kind of a statement that, hey, UW football is on the, on the ascent. This is UW football might be playoff caliber. So even then, I don't know. Like, like when was the last time Washington won a game with this much on the line in this dramatic of a fashion. It's been a long time. And if you take out that 9 game against USC, you'd have to go way, way back to find another game like this. So I want to process it properly because this game has set the Huskies up very nicely to have an opportunity to make the playoff. If they lose this game, I think it's over. You're at home, you're playing a Ducks team that is not, I mean, they're obviously a fantastic team, but they're not the super powerhouse Ducks that we've seen in the past. And I think if you lose to them at home, you can pretty much forget about it. But finding a way to win this game, even though obviously Oregon had to make some serious mistakes to allow us to win the game, I mean, we had to make plenty of mistakes to allow them to be ahead late in the game anyway, so... I uh I, I just want to make sure this game gets the attention it deserves because this was a special one and it's possible a couple months from now we're talking about this as one of the all-time great Huskies games because it springboarded us to big things. I want to start with this defense because this is the side of the ball that's a little bit of a tough sell. They couldn't stop Bo Nix and they couldn't stop Bucky Irving, they couldn't stop Jordan James, they couldn't stop Troy Franklin. Um, I understand. But here's what I'm going to say. This is what I said in the stream during the game, and this is what I'm going to say now. I'm not down on them. I am not down on the Washington defense. I'm pretty sure we all went into this game. If you are a smart Washington fan, you went into this game understanding that we do not have a great defense. We have a defense that is probably a little better than it was last year, but it has problems, okay? Oregon, that offense is going to put up numbers. So I look at this game and I see the things that everyone else is going to see. The tackling is not very good. There was a little bit of laziness. There was a little bit of a lack of a, okay, a lot of a lack of a pass rush that continues to frustrate me because if there's one part of this defense that should be good, it's the pass rush. We got ZTF and Braylon Trice, and we're not really getting much heat on the quarterbacks. So I uh, I well acknowledge that I wish it was better. But to me, the defense earns their money. And when I say earn their money, I mean college players really aren't earning that much money. But you know what I mean. They're earning their keep by getting Oregon off the field on three fourth down attempts. They're earning their money by getting that quick three and out on the first defensive drive of the game. Um, they're, they're earning their money by forcing a field goal attempt in the second quarter. It's the little things. You look for the little things when you're playing against a team like Oregon. So I know that 
a lot of people are going to spend this week roasting this Washington defense because they gave up 337 yards to Bo Nix. They gave up 200 plus yards on the ground. That f- almost 550 yards of offense they gave up. And I know they're going to get roasted for it, but I'm going to say it right now. I, I can't get mad at them. The offense put them in some bad positions. And honestly, overall, they answered the bell. When they had to get off the field, they got off the field. When they had to get a stop, they got a stop. It wasn't an easy stop. It wasn't a quick stop. But eventually, they got it done enough for us to win this game. And I I do want to give it up to Tuplo Latu. I'm probably mispronouncing that name. I've always had issues with it. But he had a great game. He had our one sack. He had 11 tackles in this game. I thought he played really well. Uh, I thought that Muhammad played really well as a cornerback. He was actually, he, he had the one penalty, but there are a couple of bright spots in here. And if we play defense like that, we can go far. And I know that sounds kind of weird to say because the defense did give up 33 points and 540 yards, but I'm telling you, against this Oregon team, I consider that a victory. 33 points is a victory. We were able to survive the penalty. We gave Oregon the ball at the mid at, at the 50-yard line, and they didn't get any points off of it. We gave Oregon the ball with a four-point lead with six minutes left and got the ball back to our offense in time for them to go drive down. That's, that's all you can ask for. And offensively, like I said, big, big performance by Michael Penix. I already said pretty much everything that need be said, but um, by the way, it wasn't a rib. Uh, I I thought he cracked his ribs at the end of this game. He did not. Apparently it was just cramps, which is a huge relief. Big sigh of relief there. He's fine. Apparently he was just cramping up really badly. But either way, playing through pain, leading us down the field, down to the one foot line, and to have the, the play calling, the blocking, The scheme, everything just completely fail him, nearly costing him this win. And then to just go right back out there five minutes later and say, all right, I got this. Two plays, touchdown, good night. I I mean, that's, that is the stuff that legends are made out of, guys. And Penix is already in his own way a legendary Washington Husky because he's set so many records for UW quarterbacks. Now. He's truly a legend. He he has a chance to maybe become the greatest UW quarterback ever other than Warren Moon. Like, if this season goes where it has a chance to go, the CFB playoff, and you take a look at what he accomplished over that two-year span he was here, because, of course, he's going to leave at the end of the year, I would take that over Browning. Browning had good years, yeah, but what Penix is doing week to week Way over the top. I'd much rather have Penix's higher ceiling over Jake Browning's um, uh, length of career, right? I would rather take Michael Penix's two years over what we got out of a guy like a Brock Heward or a um, a Tui or Tui or Sonny Six Killer or Cody Pickett or any of those guys we had back in like the 90s and 00s. Like he's going to be right up there with Warren Moon if he can take this team to where it looks like he's going to take it. And... You can't say enough about what he did today. You cannot say enough about what he did today, what he's doing right now. That is not a bad Oregon defense, and point blank period, he was the man today without Jalen McMillan doing really much of anything. So, I, I uh, again, nothing but praise for him. I know he threw some bad passes. I knew. I know he made some mistakes. It was not a perfect game. We had that back-to-back three-and-out sequence in the third quarter that was terrible. But right now, no, there, there doesn't need to be anything said about Michael Penix other than that he is a gamer. Because I think some other elements on this team, this offense did let him down a little bit. Not Dylan Johnson, who was awesome, by the way, gave us some balance on this, on, in this offense, gave us a little bit of balance in this um, offensive attack, allowed us to be multidimensional, 100 yards rushing in a game like this. Yeah, sign me up for that. That guy's awesome, by the way. He looks to me like a guy who could play in the NFL. And I'm not talking about Odunzi. I'm not talking about Polk. I'm not talking about Giles Jackson. It's Giles, by the way. I keep saying Gabe. 
because the Seahawks had a Gabe Jackson last year. Um, it, those guys were great too, especially Giles Jackson, who had to step in when uh, McMillan got hurt. And by the way, we really need McMillan to be okay. We can't have this be a thing all year. Our ceiling is lowered without him. Please be okay, Giles Jackson. I'm sorry, Jalen McMillan. Sorry, I'm still a little flustered. Um, here's what I'm going to say. This game did not have to be this close. And when you win a game like that, it feels so good and so relieving and so amazing. You can't really be that mad that it went that way. It's kind of like the Richard Sherman tip 49ers NFC title game win, where we should have won that game by, I think, two touchdowns and had it packed away in the fourth quarter. But you're not that mad that you didn't because you had that amazing finish and it lives in NFL infamy forever now. But I'm going to say this. I don't think DeBoer had the guys as ready as they needed to be for this game. I got to be honest. There were a lot of dumb penalties in this game on the Huskies. We had um, multiple pass interferences, which, okay, that part I can live with. We had some false starts, which I can't live with. You're at home. I mean, you had a bye week. You had two weeks to prepare for this Ducks team, and you're jumping off uh, in your false starting at home. We had the ripping the guy's helmet off after the play on third and 10. If there, And offensively, there was a extended stretch of this game where it felt like nobody was getting open. So if there's anything to be critical of right now as a Huskies fan, DeBoer, I think you escaped with this one. You did not have the guys completely ready to play. Your scheme was not getting receivers open. There were so many plays in this game where we were just like, okay, it's you on you. Go get open. Go find a way to get open on this guy and figure it out. Like, like we're not going to, the scheme is not going to help you get open. It's just going to be mano a mano. And there was a significant stretch of this game where we couldn't. So that's what I will say. That's why this game was as close as it was. Like you go back to that first half, third and 10, we've got Oregon in third and 10. And then uh, Jackson rips somebody's helmet off, gets a 15 yard penalty, easy for free first down, duck score touchdown. Third and 13, we have the Ducks in third and 13. Bo Nix breaks contained because I think it was ZTF was way out of control, rushing off the edge, gets to the outside, and you've got two Duck defensive backs kind of hanging out there, allowing Bo Nix to get up the sideline for the first down. If those guys had committed to protecting against Bo Nix earlier, then they probably stop him several yards short and it brings up an interesting decision for the Ducks. Instead, they get it, and they go down for a touchdown. So there was some sloppiness here. There was, I think, some bad coaching here. I didn't I didn't think that DeBoer called a great game with the play calling or the scheming, and that's why this game was so close. That's why we needed Oregon to mess up so bad at the end of this game for us to win. Like I, I'll say it again. I said it in my earlier video. I'll say it again. I thought the game was over. I thought the game was basically over. I thought they were just going to punt the ball, Pin us inside the 20 and say, okay, Michael Penix, you can barely stand. You're in serious pain. Like, like You are messed up right now. Go try to drive 80-plus yards to win the game with no timeouts. And I didn't think he could do it. Under normal conditions, I believe he could do it, but I thought he was hurt. So I was, I was just so confused. If you go back and look on the stream, my reaction to Oregon going for it on fourth down there was bewilderment. Michael Penix looks like he can't get the ball more than 15 yards down the field. Why would you not challenge him to have to drive the field to win the game? So we needed that to win this game because I, I, I know Penix carved up the field in two plays, but if he has to go the length of the field, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not doubting Michael Penix's abilities. I'm not questioning him, especially not right now, but I think Oregon eventually finds a way to get it done there. I really do. You got to remember the punt is going to take time off the clock. It's going to get down to about two minutes. If you have a good punt, we could have to drive the ball 90 yards to win the game. So we'll never know now, but um, those are the things that need to get buttoned up this week. Um, just little disappointed in the lack of cleanliness and attention to detail coming off a of bye week in a massive game. This was the most important game of the year. Like, like USC, I think that's going to be a little bit of a different story. This is the most important game of the year. 
and it just felt like the scheme and the play calling wasn't quite where it needed to be. Luckily, these players were. So, credit to them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bow down to Washington. 6-0.